All right, well, the whip from Uranus has been going back and forth with me trying to pick holes in the way I'm defining nature, and then I went and described what I mean by materialism in good faith, you know. And uh, he seems to be in one of these states people get in where it's like, oh, yeah, right, but what about this? And I'm right, and then I answer seriously, oh, yeah, right. So, be that as it may, let me just describe for the billionth time. I mean, this is definitely, you could go back six years and find this description. How do you define the external world when you are a skeptic? Rewind back to Aristotle time there, and you see there's a theory the world's made of substance. And that this theory is so uh, pervasive of a model that you'd even have something like love either being a substance or a tangible property of a substance. And this is all wrapped up with the logical uh, concepts of objects uh, as monads that have inherent properties that are units. And the problem is, if you take the solipsistic uh, argument, the solipsistic stream of consciousness, you have no way actually to establish this concept of substance is causing those perceptions. You can say it's as if that, right? You can say uh, when I go and I see the water perceptions and I have motor function so I can interact with water and I step in and I see how it, <coughs> you know, reacts when I splash it and all of this stuff. You can say oh, it's as if there's a substance out there. But someone could say, no, it's as if there's a, an algorithm. No, it's as if there's a God giving you these dreams. As if, as if, as if. Okay. So you can use that model in making your uh, judgments, just like you can use uh, Newtonian physics. But it doesn't work well creating well-founded definitions. Now the way I define it, what you do in philosophy a lot, in traditional philosophy, is often when you're looking at it for new ideas, you look at the language to see how people already use words and ideas. And in the case of material, I notice that there's, there's more than one lineage to the concept of material. Not a historic lineage here, but, but a logical lineage. There's this idea of material is substance. But there's this other idea that comes from reasoning, that comes from, from data processing, from information perception processing, which is a material fact, something that matters, that makes a difference in something else. So you have to have a criterion by which to judge if it matters. But you see, I can find out criteria that apply to all of us. Like everybody wants to breathe, everybody wants to survive. Oh no, there's exceptions. I will deal with that as a special case, right? Because unless you're one of those people, I can tell you it matters if a piano is falling over your head towards you. That matters to you. That's a material fact. And, um, that's demonstrable. That, that, that can be argued on the basis of that you don't want to get crushed. So I might be making an assumption that you don't want to get crushed, but pretty safe assumption. But I can't prove to you it's, it's material. You could be in the matrix. We could be in God's dream. But uh, it doesn't matter. It, it, it's a fact of material consequence to you. Now, if you take material facts this way, it includes persistent emotional facts. If you get um, panicky in public spaces, uh, that's a material fact to you. Now, how does it, is it a material fact to me? Well, it's material that you have that reaction. Are those spaces materially dangerous? Uh, should I be worried because you're worried? Things like that. Uh, uh, those end up involving different criteria.
Now, if you keep looking, keep producing this set of things that merely matter into ones that are very consistent, right? That matter in general, not just to me. Not just to me because I get nervous, but things that will matter to other people. You get down to physics as a, a core set. Now, you can get a bigger set of material facts. I just told you even emotional facts are material in this sense. But when you're trying to figure out, well, which of these are going to matter to other people, you get down to mass and distance and time, energies and fields and the discoveries of physics. Those we call material, not because they're about the, uh, the substance, we don't know that yet, but because they apply to everybody. We found out material facts that I can take solipsistically, that I can know ahead of time from the way I take those and the similarity of our sense systems that you can take that same data. I can make an experiment that I can rerun so many times that I know that if you rerun it, you'll see the same results. And this is how I establish an epistemology and have knowledge about the world, regardless of its metaphysical nature that it doesn't have.